Hi, this is Ruben Lerner, and you are watching another installment of my Python Standard Library Video Explainer series. This time we're going to talk about uh, Memory View. I've seen Memory View for the longest time in the Python Standard Library documentation, and quite frankly, I've never used it in any code that I wrote. But part of this video explainer series is me having a chance to learn about things I've never used before, um, and then trying to understand them well enough so I can explain them to you. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying memory view is probably something that if you've never used it before, you probably aren't going to need to use it either. It's really meant for very specific applications. However, some people will need it, and I think it does give us some insights into how Python does some things. So here's the basic idea. Let me first read to you from the documentation and then I'll try to translate it into something more understandable. So memory view objects allow Python code to access the internal data of an object that supports the buffer protocol without copying. Well, now that's super clear, right? Let me even copy this and I'll put this into Jupyter here so you can see it and stare uh, with your mouth open at what in the world does this mean? Okay, so it allows Python code to access the internal data of an object that supports the buffer protocol. So first of all, what is this buffer protocol that it's talking about? The idea is, as far as I can tell, that there is a protocol in Python known as the buffer protocol, all right, that is not surprising so far, that allows us to talk directly to a data structure and get its data out. Normally in Python, if I ask a string for its data, it'll give it to me. If I ask a list for its data, it'll give it to me. But what if I have a really large piece of data? What if I have an unusual type of data? There's this protocol that allows the object to share its data with me. Why have you never heard of this protocol before? Because it's basically implemented at the level of, at the C level, right? So if you're working in C, if you're writing C programs that will integrate into Python, then great, you'll understand this buffer protocol and probably want to use it because it's going to be so much faster than working through the object. It basically allows you to shortcut, and instead of working with the object at the high level, Python level, you work at this lower level, just sort of whoop, grab the data like that. Moreover, you get it without copying meaning you can get the data and you're going to get a reference to the data rather than the data itself. So if I have, I don't know, a, you know, a megabyte of image information, I don't want to copy it, that whole megabyte, into something else just to be able to work with it. I want to be able to access the data without copying it. So the buffer protocol lets you access this data, and a memory view data object lets you do this at the Python level. You don't need any C programming to work with these Python objects and not copy their data, but rather access it. So, okay, so what this means is that anything that we're going to use a memory view on is going to have to support this buffer protocol. Um, and it turns out that there are actually only two objects written in Python that come with a standard library that do this. That would be bytes and byte array, both of which I've discussed earlier in the series. So let's say I say here b equals b of you know, abc bfgh. All right, so the type of b is bytes. And I can now say v equals a memory view of b. And now if I say, what's the type of v? Well, it's a memory view. If I say, show me v, it's going to say, oh, this is memory, memory at this address. Okay, well, well now what? Like, what? What can I actually do with this? Well, basically, I now have access to the values in b. But anything I do with those values is not going to be copied, it's just going to give me a view of them. So if I say a view from 2 to 5, it's going to show me the elements. Right? You see here, I have memory at this location here. So I'm not actually like uh, allocating memory. It's just saying, oh yeah, I have this view here. I have this, It's almost like a pointer. All right, so what we have here is an ability to look into memory. Now, you might be saying, wait a second. Like, how is this possibly useful? Well, if you want to grab a section of or look at a section of your data without copying it, and again, if it's a megabyte nowadays, eh, megabytes are small. If it's a gigabyte, that might actually be serious. Yeah, but now how do I see what's there? Well, we actually have two different methods we can use. I can say v two bytes, and then I get back the bytes. And if I say v two list, look at what I'm going to get. I'm going to get a list of the integers referring to the byte values. Of course, this is going to be lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, lowercase d, right? If I just do a chr of 97, we'll get a lowercase a, and so on and so forth. So this memory view lets me sort of track what's in that byte object without having another copy of it. Now, if you're thinking, when would I possibly ever want to use this? That's the thing. For normal Python programmers like me and probably you, it's not something we're going to need on a very regular basis. I'll give you a slightly more realistic example of where we might want to use it. If I say here a equals a byte array of 
<coughs> P, A, B, C, D, F, G, H. Right, and so now A is that byte array. If I say V equals a memory view of A, well now V is the memory view there. If I say V of you know, 2 to 5, it's going to give me something similar. But now I can say V of you know, 2 to 5, you know, 2, I don't know, 2 bytes, let's say. And I'll get that byte string. Now you might be thinking, okay, what's the big difference? We just saw something like this. But remember, a byte array is actually mutable. So I can say A of 3 equals exclamation point. Oops, sorry. It used to be byte exclamation point. Well, no? Okay, let's just do this. Let's just do like, I don't know, uh, I don't know, uh, 99. There we go. Okay. And now if I look at A, there we go. You see how C is copied you know, twice there? Fine. So now if I say, show me V from 2 to 5, 2 bytes. See, now it tracks that because the memory view that I have is still sort of watching that section of memory. So there are a few other things that you can do with a memory view that might be of interest to you if you're using it. Let me just scroll here. So I showed you two bytes. I showed you two lists. We can do hex. We can say v dot hex, and that'll give me. And it looks. I know it looks really funny, but it's like this is the hex 61, hex 62, hex 63 because hex 61 is of course 97, and the chr of 0, 61 is going to be lowercase a. And the reason that here we have 63, 63 is that it's our lowercase letter c twice in a row. That's 99. All right, what else can we do with it? Again, these are not going to be typically useful to you in a day-to-day -day situation. They're not really useful to me either. I can say, hey, what's v.obj? What is the object that is actually that we're actually looking at? Right? What's the object that we're taking a look at? So here we see it's that byte array. I can say here, for example, v.n bytes, and it'll tell me how many bytes is this taking up. And you'll see that it's eight bytes. Sure enough, this is eight bytes long here. Right? So this is how much space our memory views, uh, the, the, the objects to which the memory view is pointing would take up. So here, oh, and then let me just show one last thing, which is v.read only. And that, of course, is going to be false. Whereas if I were to say v equals a memory view, let's go back to b, our byte string. Now v.obj is going to be that byte string, and v.read only is going to be true. So there we see a bit of a difference. Finally, I can say here, V dot item size. And V dot item size will tell me how big in bytes is each element. Now remember that both a byte string and a byte array, they contain bytes, and thus each element is one byte long. You can imagine a more complex data structure that works with different kinds of data that would have a different item size. But I believe that every item needs to be the same size. It's basically an array in that sense, and not a Python list. So where are you going to use a memory view? Again, if you're watching this series, or if you're like me, day-to-day -day work, you're almost certainly not going to need to use it. However, if you're working with very large pieces of memory, if you're dealing with image manipulation, if you're dealing with, I don't know, memory map files, that sort of thing, where you have many, many megabytes, maybe, maybe, maybe even uh, many, many gigabytes, and you don't want to be copying that data, rather you want to refer to it and iterate over it or something like that, then a memory view might indeed be worthwhile. But again, you can only do it with objects that support the buffer protocol. Um, so when do I next plan to use memory view? I don't. When should you use it? You probably shouldn't. But understanding that Python does provide the sort of low-level interface um, can be, give, at least it gives me more insight into how Python works and how it tries to provide us with APIs at all sorts of different levels, both the high level that I normally use and the lower level for people who need to do higher uh, speed, higher, uh, more optimized systems written in Python. All right, enough about memory views. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back very soon with more installments of my Python uh, standard library video explainer series.